Hey guys, and welcome back to episode 3 of me building my little forest house in the forest that I am building. Today we're going to get to some of the interior, and we're also going to get to some of these large trees for the outside. Actually making the forest that the house is supposed to be within. If you guys want to see how I do the trees, I will leave a timestamp to skip to, to the tree part where you can learn how I do this tree. If you like this tree. Here's the other tree I did. I hope whatever the heck I just said helped. So without further ado, I will get into the video. I'm feeling a little unsure of what I want to do on the inside right now. So let's just plan out where we want some of the trees to go instead. I know I want a big one like here ish. That kind of spreads out. And I'm definitely going to have one kind of like here-ish. Maybe one more up here. It kind of just surround the house. And maybe we'll start on a few of them. Probably gonna want another one. I want a bridge across the thing here, so maybe one a smaller one right here. We can at least start on one of the trees and see where it goes. So first I like to start with a nice trunk structure going upwards that I can actually work from. I like to add a few little knots and twists in it because I, it adds some interest. And then from there we begin with the leaves. I first like to make a little plateau sort of thing at the lowest level where I would then work out from and I like to make it droop down. So I have a layer of leaves and then below that I start to bring the layers down so that it creates kind of like a droopy leaf looking thing because I don't know pine trees tend to do that from my many times looking at pine trees. When I'm working on pine trees I just try to make it try to alternate the droopy bits and where the droopy bits go down so there's different parts that are droopy and different parts that aren't. And most of the time, I'm just kind of doing whatever and then just thinking how exactly I think I should maybe trim back or add to different areas. I kind of think that pine trees, at least to me, are a little bit easier than a lot of other trees. They're just kind of tedious because I have to do so many different layers and it feels like I'm just sat there forever doing layers. But it's just kind of a back and forth sort of thing. Just try not to make it look too... Um, samey on every single side so really try not to put patterns in your pine trees because pine trees tend to not have patterns in them or squares really but maybe that's getting a bit too unrelated to minecraft anyway we're getting to the end of this little bit um finishing up the top of the tree i just add a few little blocks you kind of have to really trim back on the layers at the top so i just make it kind of cute anyway yeah i think it's done now down the bottom of the tree we might add some moss to kind of show how the roots have like pulled up the earth because i feel like that would happen on a tree this big it kind of get to the point where they start really pulling up the earth and their roots kind of stretch out away from the tree we get some grass, we can pretty up the area in front of the house, make it a little bit more complete. That's already adding a whole lot to the front of the house. So this is how the pine tree ended up looking. Situated nicely with the other tree in front of this little house. So to quickly illustrate just how I'm designing trees like this, I'm going something like this, and then a few blocks away, I might decide to go down a bit. And then from here, something kind of like this. It's a little bit square right now, and so I'll just add different areas, maybe even go up in sections, and have these upward sections then droop down further. And it's okay to leave some gaps like this, I find it adds, and then you will alternate up above the gap, having bits that extend out. Just in case you couldn't get that from the time lapse. And for this tree, which I said is going to be massive, oops, my poor grass, this tree is going to be a 4x4 four four tree, and it's going to be really tall and cool and amazing. 
and a tree like this would have absolutely just bazonker roots, you know. So I just started to build out the roots from the central trunk and kind of make it look like the tree wouldn't tip over, but it honestly... I had to rework the roots way later on anyway, so, you know, it wasn't too important about getting it all finalized right now before the rest of the tree was done. Just want something to start with, bringing up the land, adding to it, making it kind of look stable in some capacity. And then as for the shape of this tree, it's going to be um, kind of like a willow tree, I think going to have a lot of things falling down from it so it's gonna have to go up to one big central point kind of thing and then from up here it has branches stemming out and then kind of falling down like that the bottom branches are the only branches that end up being visible but the top branches are still important in on me kind of understanding the shape of how I want the tree to end up. So I like to put some upper branches in anyway. Honestly, they're kind of useless and you don't need to put them in at all. Just put the visible branches in and call it a day. Other than that, I mean, if you wanted to make the tree really cool and interesting, you could even leave some of the inner branches visible and make it look like part of the tree is decaying or something or but basically, after I put in the branches, I cover it all with a layer of leaves so that I then have a good starting point. The point of this, of really large trees like this, is kind of to have them be really pretty from underneath. Not necessarily anywhere else, you know. So we're gonna add a few little areas of interest, just so that when you're looking up, it's interesting. I always like to begin with the under layer on big trees like this. Like I said, it's the underside that's the important bit. And so usually I will take that leaf layer on the top and I will map out a little area, a circular area around that leaf layer. From there, I just like to do this on all of the branches, uh, even if they're not going to be visible, so that I can really start thinking about the general shape of the tree and working it out from there. And if you're getting to this point, I don't know if you're following along, but if you're getting to this point and you're like, man, this is really taking a long time and now I have to do all of these other steps, um, this tree really is taking a lot longer time than I expected. You would be absolutely correct because these trees take a really, really long time for me to build. Um, I like to have them solid on the inside too for some reason. Be prepared if you want to build something like this. It's going to take you probably a few hours. At least these, this one did take me, I don't know, over an hour, two hours kind of thing. Then at this point, I like to bulk up the tree a little bit more, add some leaves to it. Just get the idea of what I'm working with. We're not going for building the entire tree all at once. We're just bulking it up a little bit so that I can really start looking at it from the underside. I'm going to add some highlights into the leaves on the underside just to make it look a little bit um, glowy and magical. Put some varying depths. And then from here we're going to start the initial uh, droopiness layer, official term. So for this droopiness layer, as I called it, I'm going to be kind of allowing the trees to start falling down from that first layer. When doing this sort of part, you want to make sure you're not having areas that are bulking up too much and clumping together, making large masses of these droopy bits. You want them to be separate from one another enough, but not too sparse, so that it doesn't look like there's nothing, but at the same time, not too much. There's balance. The leaves are balancing. <laughs> I think, honestly, with these kinds of areas, you shouldn't think too much about what you're placing, just kind of put stuff down and then you can always rework it, delete things, add things on later. A lot of the time it's just hard getting that initial layer down. So if you are new to making trees like this, I would recommend just giving it a shot, seeing what you like, seeing what you don't like, and working from there. Because a lot of the time, with any art to be honest, you just have to kind of experiment and have fun. Sometimes it's not always going to look the best. 
there's things about this tree that I didn't actually think turned out too great, but with any organic shape, with any creation, you just do what you want to do and you just keep going. And sometimes it turns out good, sometimes it doesn't, and you just, as long as you're having fun, that's pretty much all that matters. Tree building to me is very fun, even if it's very tedious. I say that all the time. I do actually really enjoy, even if it takes a long time. They are fun. They're very relaxing to me. And then from here, we're going to add a second droopy layer. Kind of like a hat draping on top of the first droopy layer. And we're also going to make it less see-through so that the underside isn't as bright. So here I put on the second layer. And it's basically the same as the first layer, just placing more leaves. Not much to say about what I really do here. It's just a replication of the previous step. I do try to make this layer a bit longer so that the leaves kind of make more of a shell around the outside. But other than that, there's not much to say. When building most things, I think if you look at trees just in general, you'll get a better understanding of how you want to actually build it. Now that I'm done with the bottom droopy bits and building up the rest of the tree on top, I just try to make it rounder and um, kind of fluffier as you kind of see on a lot of willow trees. I hope I, I hope I kind of got close to the thing I was envisioning, but you know, here I am, like I said, just going back in to finish up certain areas that I didn't really like the shape of. The trunk really did not look like it was supporting the tree at all. So I went in and I fixed that up. I also went to the parts that looked a bit more sparse and I tried to make those look a little bit fuller. When I did end up getting to the top part of the tree and to the outside of the tree that's going to be visible from afar, I wanted to make it look kind of fluffy because I really like trees that look really fluffy. And I'm trying my best to make my trees look like that. It's something I'm very much still kind of figuring out myself. And then back on what I was talking about before, about not trying to make everything kind of look perfect, I think it's very easy to just want to keep perfecting the tree over and over and over again. But really, you look at trees in nature and a lot of the time they're kind of lopsided and kind of goofy looking. So your tree in Minecraft probably really isn't that bad. I think people really judge what they're building a lot more harshly than I think they should. So. If you want to build a tree like this, I don't know if you do. The point of this whole thing that I'm saying is just build a tree, even if it's just a standard Minecraft default tree. It's probably okay, you know. Really, the only way to learn is just to make a bunch of mistakes and experiment and maybe make a lopsided tree that looks kind of weird. I've made plenty of lopsided trees myself. Anyway, I hope my tree looks okay. <laughs> I tried my best. But this little finishing up with the roots, this is where this little sped up bit kind of ends. So goodbye for now. To kind of finish up the underside of this big willow tree, I was thinking we might add in some lanterns because the area is very dark. See, I don't know how the heck a person is, you know, like climbing up this tree to put the lanterns up here, but we don't need to figure that out. We just have some cute lanterns. Not too many though, because I I like the area being a little bit dark, so. Maybe just some of the droopy bits don't have lights on them instead, and are just kind of droopy. And maybe one more coming down from this little branch here. And that one can have a lantern like that. Having some things hanging down, I think just adds a little finishing touch to the area we can even put some bushes down on the ground and eventually just make this whole area kind of really nice but for right now we'll add some bushes i don't really want bats spawning so instead i'm going to put some moss covers on the ground having the tree kind of go like that we can even put some roots under the tree as well as some more natural things to kind of blend it into the terrain some grass maybe because it kind of makes sense for some roots to be down like that we can just add those in and 
add some grass pieces here and there. And even some moss starting to grow over maybe some of the roots, I don't know. And then over on this side, facing the water, we can have some ferns here on this muddy bank. So, for the most part, I think that this tree is finally complete. Maybe. Who knows? Is anything really complete? I might come back to it. Can't make promises. See, it's already not complete because I'm adding a bench. I I have no idea where this bench is going to go. Maybe, um... Having a bench around here would be nice. May maybe up a little level. Bring the moss out. Bench up here. We can pretend the root goes like that. And a little bench. Eventually, I'm going to add in some paths around here. Linking up all of these sides. But for right now, I think I'm going to finish off the video with a little interior for this section. Here's going to be like a little uh, working area. It's the shed of the house, so they'd have probably a bunch of storage. Probably want a nice little sink in here. And we're probably going to want some storage around the base. Maybe a little anvil in the corner. A grindstone. I don't know if that goes there. Grindstone here. Getting a little workbench over here with a hammer and everything like that. And then maybe one of these guys. I know this is where you would want to keep your ladders. I don't know if I want this kind of ladder. Maybe um, you'd want one that you could actually use like outside. So maybe something... Just a little um ladder, I guess. Maybe we'll move the workbench over somewhere else. This is our portable ladder. This guy can go over here. Can be a little workbench. And then the ceiling. So, unlike the rest of the house, we're gonna maybe use some spruce. And go around the edges like this. And then up on this layer. Similar sort of thing. And then just some lanterns hanging down. And, you know, we might have some shelves around the place. Kind of like this. Where maybe some stuff is getting stored. Like, I don't know, random household items that got forgotten about because they weren't wanting to be used. That can go in the corner. A little flower pot. Maybe they're storing a bunch of their old candles. And then maybe something similar on this side too. Except up here they're storing their fletching table. Because. And maybe another pot up here. Yeah. So I mean for a little shed area it's pretty simple. But that area is complete. And we have a visitor already. And so I think... In the next episode, we're going to work a little bit more on the interiors, because I would like to actually get them done. This time, I just didn't really feel like doing interiors, so we're doing some trees. I hope the tutorial on how I did my trees was a little bit helpful, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Goodbye.